Welcome to Sotopia and Friends. So like a couple weeks ago, I had this really harebrained idea that we're in this crazy time and I thought, let's reach out to friends and see how it's going and have like kind of a conversational chat and just, you know, see how checking on in on everybody. And I'm kind of just ad-libbing now. Megan, is that right? Yeah. 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 Well, you can, this is episode two with our friend Lizzie House. Yep. And um, why don't you introduce yourself, Amy? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> my name is Amy Newbold. I'm the owner of Sotopia. This is Megan. She's our creative director and she's my Andy Richter to my Conan O'Brien. So I don't claim to be Conan O'Brien, but if I was, I'd be the Asian Conan O'Brien and I'd be really hot in Korea. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, Today we have Lizzie Health with, with us, who is an artist and educator and entrepreneur, and you may know her from some of her fabric lines that she has designed, you know, here and there. But her roots are traditional fine art printmaking, and now recently she has added mom to her list of accomplishments. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's that is a big one. <laughs> so, so, Lizzie, Lizzie, sorry. So, tell us about your background and your fam and and your family. Like how far back, <laughs> which family? Oh, okay, hang on. So let's, let me go this way too. And I've been asking friends in the industry, you know, like, and so uh, going back really quick, Lizzie, do you remember the first time we met? Not to put you on the spot, but maybe I, I remember Hot, like, I think it was at my house. Yes, in Salt Lake. Mm. Yeah, the go. first time we met was at my house. Yes. Did you, you just show up at help. people's houses, Amy? Well, I needed help. I desperately needed help. And a handful of people, um, I don't know who set it up. It might have been Lee. Right, right. So basically, um, I think... And I don't know what year, so you're going to have to tell me. This is it would have been 2011. This is oh, the wow. five, It was Castle Peeps. It was 1,001 Peeps. Yes. 1,001 yeah. Peeps. And Lizzie was getting, and it was for, I think, Salt Lake Market. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Salt Lake Spring Market. And Lizzie was, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong again, I think it was your first booth. It was my first booth, and I had sewn i had made a book i wrote all the patterns i designed all the quilts and i had i was literally making them all by myself i, I did literally everything for that booth on my own except for i had this help for i think you guys did you come once or twice i don't know i think i made a come once or twice but like, I know a big help was Lee. Um, she's not in Salt Lake anymore. I think she's actually moved to California. But um, basically, we were doing quilts, cutting. I think it was a snail quilt. I don't know yeah. if I'm right or wrong on that. Yeah. And so, the monkey wrench. Yeah. And so we were helping piecing that quilt together, cutting that quilt. And it was like, just the amount of work that goes into making a booth is insanity. Like... And then, then when you're just, you're, I, how old was I? 2011. I have no idea. 2010. I would have been. 2011. So nine, nine years, nine years ago. Mm -hmm, nine years ago. Relatively young. Just doing it by myself. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. So that's the first time I met Lizzie. And then years go on by. And then I think you moved out of salt lake mm -hmm. i don't know when you moved and i i think you came back too so there's a couple of like you know you're coming back and going forth and and then i think you did the big like you know we're i'm gonna travel across the world to teach your meadowland quilt and like and i think that was so awesome and so and then we asked you to come and teach for sotopia in denver and that was 2017 yeah wow. yeah yeah 2017 and so been keeping in contact with lizzie here and there like 
you know, back and forth. And then we have a, a mutual love for Adventure Time. Oof. Yeah. And so... Did that ending just get you? No, I haven't watched it yet. What? No, I haven't watched okay. it. Okay. Well, so, it will. Oh, no, I did watch it. It did get me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so that's how... That's how I know Lizzie. Um, we've known each other for a while. Uh, but tell us about your background and your family life. What's going on? Real quick, I, I think I asked you one time, because I'm, I'm always interested in what people's impression of me is, like like what they think of me when they meet me, because it's often not, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I make a very good first impression. <laughs> Ever? Ever? Probably ever. Maybe, maybe say, sometimes. I'm going to say I disagree because Ben's married to you, so he must have had a great impression of you. It took a long time. Um, <laughs> but I think I asked you, and you're like, you were pretty stressed out. You were stressed out. You're doing your own booth, and you're making your own quilt, and you're like, people were coming in, and, the, you know, like, you were just like, I just... I just need help. I don't, you know, like, it's so hard. I was waking up at seven and going to bed at, like, two. Yeah. To do it. Right. Uh, um, market prep. <laughs> don't it's miss it. I just don't <laughs> miss it. Um, I, my background, mm, I, like, how I got into, where were you born and raised? Houston, Texas. Oh, I didn't know. I grew up going to festival with my mom. She would take us out of school and we would go. And so I had been to that show my entire life. Which so yeah. It's a circus. <laughs> You're like funny, funny meeting you here again at Market. Uh, I actually got one year. I'm really sensitive to synthetic fragrance. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been to festival, no offense to anyone. It's just a bunch of old ladies <laughs> wearing a whole bunch of perfume because they can't smell how much they're wearing. Mm. That, that has gone from them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, I was so inundated on every aisle by the perfume that I literally, you know how they stick trash cans just right in the center of the intersections? Yeah, yeah. Just puked right in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> but like my, I just, she always, she would take us out of school. Um, she used to, I think she said, she was like, I would take turns. And I'm like, I sincerely remember going every year. Yeah. You're like, so, no. I don't know if, maybe she took turns for the other kids and it was, I always went. Are you the uh, oldest? No, I have an older brother. An older, an brother. older brother and then two younger sisters. Younger sisters. So how do you get, so what's the roots in Salt Lake? Um I went to school in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Um and I really like the Intermountain West. Mm -hmm. And I had a sister living there. I I wanted to basically I wanted to live in a town where I could walk or bike my entire life okay and the cost when I moved there the cost of living was relatively low mm -hmm. it's changed a little um just like a little bit with all <laughs> of those tech companies moving in and things like that um but yeah so I I moved there because I felt like it. Oh, okay. I had a, yeah, my, the sister just younger than me was living there, and I wanted to be closer to her, um, and then eventually my littler sister moved there, and then eventually my mom moved there, so we just follow each other around, basically. Well, we call, I call it, like, the Utah Bowl, so, like, once you, like, live here, you, sometimes you just kind of stay here or you leave and then you come back it's such a good place like my my one hesitancy to move back at this point is the air quality 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Their quality is crap. But, but is it like a, isn't it an all the time thing? It's just, a, isn't it only like a few times a year that it gets as bad mm -hmm. as it does? Or is it mm -hmm. pretty consistent? It's pretty good. It's all the time. I think in the winter, it, you can see it more because of mm -hmm. the pressure system. It acts mm -hmm. like it, do, it is a bowl. Mm -hmm. um, but their quality is bad all the time. Okay. And then well, during the fireworks, like during July, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's like you can't see in front of you. Well, and that's like, and I'm living in California in like one of the worst air quality places in California because we have a permanent inversion that only gets blown out when we have wind, which isn't very often. So it's like, I know that we're at the top of the list, but sometimes Salt Lake will bump us down, but not too often. I, I would just like to say that we win most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not a thing you want to win. No, this is why I live indoors a lot. It's just, yeah, too many allergies. Um, and air quality, I'm guessing the air quality might be a little bit better right now. I, I think it's, uh, we were just looking at a report the other day that was showing cities around the world and mm -hmm. their air quality pre-shutdown. LA is and, really nice right now. And post-shutdown, they're like, I can see the sky. I can see the stars. Mm -hmm. Like, I can breathe. Yeah. Um, think, so from Houston, Texas, eventually moved to Salt Lake. Um, I spent, I would say most of my, it's, I spent all my twenties out West. Mm -hmm. Um, and briefly lived in Portland for a little bit after school. Um, lived in London for a little bit after I taught, um, in Idaho. Um, and then I went on tour. I started, I think a lot of people know, I started designing fabric really young mm -hmm. um, in the industry. I was, at the time, I was the youngest person to ever do it. So I, I had a really hard time having people take me seriously, especially because I looked so young. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have that problem anymore, which is now I feel like is a problem. Um, but I looked really, really young and that so that was it was challenging because they'd never even seen somebody there that young um and i i had decided when i was six that i would design fabric oh. wow because my mom like i said i've told this story a lot my mom used to make a lot of our clothes and i, I didn't like anything mm-hmm I didn't like anything and I was super particular and really bossy. Um, real quick. Somebody has asked me, what is Magnolia like? What are her, what are her, like, what's her personality like? And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so wonderful. She's so sweet. She's really, um, she's super inquisitive. Like she's all of these things. I'm like, and she's super bossy. And they're like, oh, you mean she has leadership skills? And I'm like, no, my baby doesn't have leadership skills. She's just bossy. And I'm like, also, I have leadership skills and I'm bossy. Those are two different things. Um, but I, yeah, and so we had a really hard time finding any fabric that I wanted to use mm -hmm. um, because it was so particular. Also, mm, I don't know if you guys remember the fabric from like 1989 through 92. In tones not of country super blue and great. raspberry hmm. yeah <laughs> or like yeah not great stuff yeah um, small calico prints it's not all i remember of that era lots of thimble berries um and and so but when we finally did find something that i liked after seeing so much i was i was just like how did that get there mm -hmm. um and my mom said, like, somebody drew it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, then I'll draw it. Because I was already making a lot of artwork um, as a child. Um, and so I was like, oh, then I'll do it. And so all my life, people would ask me, what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm like, well, I'm going to design fabric. Wow. And they're like, what does that mean? <laughs> they're just like, my entire life, people have been like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are you wearing? So yeah, I mean, I think now that we're in the industry, we know that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If we hadn't been, I'd be like, 
What do you mean? There's an artist actually out there designing all the fabric and the packaging and everything that we purchase. There is, you know. I think I think that the world that we live in now with spoon flour and with all of these custom and on demand printing services and things like that, everyone wants to design. Everyone wants something customs their own thing on stuff and so i think people have like they think about it differently now but i would say even six years ago people are like i have no idea what you're talking about yeah interesting yeah um so but i did nice okay so um <laughs> As a proclaimed house, a self-proclaimed, cat. self-proclaimed house self-proclaimed. cat. Yes. yes, self-proclaimed house cat. How are you doing with the current stay-at-home order? Um, I used to be a world-traveling house cat, but now I'm just a regular house cat. <laughs> um, I I was doing so. I Magnolia was born early. Okay. Yes. Wait. During. Well, how early? like uh six and a half weeks okay so we also have that in common so this was born six weeks early and then pepper was born seven weeks early Mm. so yeah that when you were going through that i was sending you messages and was like you were and i appreciate that so much i was like hang in there mom and then now that she's so big and fat and you're like oh my gosh she's like she's literally like tripled in size Mm -hmm. and you can't even imagine how small she was right i look at the pictures and i weep like like little like there's her leg yeah it's very very hard to look i'm looking forward to the thigh rolls i'm guessing she might be starting one but oh she's got them she's got (laughs) them that's those breadsticks (laughs) that all you can eat breadstick basket yeah no so (laughs) It's so, it's so interesting because like you don't, when you have a baby in the NICU and people that are listening and you know, they have regular size babies and you're just like, you have a baby that's in the NICU or you have a baby that's super tiny, like you don't realize, oh, they make blood pressure like cuffs. Oh my gosh. For the tiniest the little stuff. Babies. The diapers alone. Like, I hope that you save one of the diapers because so obviously I had twins and so and because it was already considered a high risk pregnancy. And so I was going to the NICU unit to do all of my checkups and I had to go twice a week and just do all the things. Mm -hmm. I had to have like the stress tests. I had to have those twice a week for weeks going up to it. And then right before it was three, three times a week. And it was just, it was kind of ridiculous. But so I always expected, like we were expecting these tiny, tiny babies. We were expecting that they would come early because they prep you for the worst. Mm -hmm. And so I had like the preemie clothes and had all of that ready. And then of course my babies didn't want to come out until like I was almost 39 weeks and they ended up feeling sorry for me and inducing me because I was like, come on, very uncomfortable. Yeah. So that was, but I was expecting, I was just expecting to have like a C-section or I was expecting to have these early teeny tiny babies and none of that happened. And they were still, you know, smaller, but nothing like, you know, they were still under six pounds, but yeah, no, they weren't, they were over six pounds, six, one, oh and six, gosh. six. See, <laughs> and that's like, to me, I'm like, good job, high five, because mine was like, Pepper was four, four pounds, mm-hmm. like, I can't even remember, I want to say 11 ounces, and th- to see the, gra- like, to see them grow so fast in such a short time, like, you're like, now you're like, oh, there's, there's fat rolls and there's like, you know, but at the time when you're in the NICU, they're like, we need to gain her weight. You know, we need to do all these things and get her like, get her like self-functioning. And so it's, I feel like, I feel for you, Lizzie, when you're going. Through well, that. in the NICU, Magnolia, she just like, even though she was so small, like three and a half pounds, mm-hmm. um, she she kept doing all the things that they asked her to. She was just small. Mm-hmm. They eventually kicked her out of the NICU and sent her up to general pediatrics because she was so healthy. She was just small. Mm-hmm. And that is what, like, that's how she is. She's fine. She's totally, like, 
she has some preemie problems, which are super common, but mm-hmm. it's like preemies have holes that haven't closed yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> like belly button, uh, mm-hmm. heart, things like that, that eventually work themselves out, but mm-hmm. they just, but other than that, she's just incredibly healthy and she's growing and she's so smart and she's so beautiful. Aww. Um, and yeah, that and I know. And pers- coming from personal experience where when my husband, and I wanted to have children, it took us a long time to get there and we had had help. And it's just, I know what it's like when that finally happens and you're just like, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful and hard at the same time. It's just, it's, it's wonderful, but it's definitely, I mean, people who can just get pregnant, like without even trying, you just, it's, they don't know to be so thankful because it, it can take a lot of work and a lot of time. It took us five years to get pregnant and I'm glad it took us this long because it made us stronger as a couple and gave us the patience. Like I was so impatient before I'm an extremely impatient Gemini and that has definitely increased my patience tenfold. I am a very patient Gemini. (laughs) See, and I, I used to be really impatient and now I'm definitely more on the patient side, but it, it's always been an issue. The thing is like, we didn't have any trouble getting pregnant, but I just don't, I just don't know that people just, it's all just so hard. Mm -hmm. It's just really, really hard. And it changes you deeply. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and the thing is, is that even no matter, no matter how you got there, you just hope that it stays there. (laughs) Like, the entire time I was just like I hope there's a baby at the end of this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really hope that there but what is. they don't tell you is you're so paranoid during that, the whole pregnancy like I hope this but then the baby's born and you're like oh it's 10 times worse now <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like will I, I ever be okay <laughs> I mean I, I feel like every year every year my kids grow a year older I'm like yeah made another year sweet you know? <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Yeah. seriously because in the beginning you're just like oh once the babies are born I'll just be like so much more chill and I was like oh no no now I'm no no about them. there's yeah there's things like oh my baby like pepper rolled off the bed and she broke her arm and she landed on an Ikea table <laughs> or, or or she stuffed a bead up her nose oh, oh my gosh. gosh I've done that how how am I gonna get this bead out of her nose mm-hmm. And so it's just like, it's just those things that you're just like, <gasps> okay. You've done the bead, except the bead didn't require an emergency room visit, but the Israeli couscous did for both of them. It? Yeah. I come around the corner. I had to run and go do something. They were eating dinner. I come around the corner and I see a kid going, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> and of course it was like the one who had the idea. Like hers came out relatively easy. They just had to use a hook, but the one who's definitely wasn't her idea and she only had one up there, they had to use a balloon on her. But so, the ER, yeah, the ER knew us after that. Like, they're like, oh, it's the couscous twins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Lizzie, awesome. how are you handling the stay at home order? How's oh, it going? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was getting at was, We've been in quarantine since we came home from the oh, hospital. Okay. Because okay. does Ben go out and get groceries at all? Or are you guys just getting things delivered? Uh, no, we the the grocery store is like two blocks away, okay. and so we uh, go to the grocery store. Um, and and so I've been at home since December because. Um, you know, a preemie baby has a really fragile immune system. They were already saying it was a bad flu season. Um, I just wasn't going to take any chances. Um, And so, so right when I was like, she's really healthy, she's doing well, I'm ready to get out there. They're like, you have to stay home. And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) So just as soon as I was like, I'm feeling like emotionally like prepared like I say that and I'm like Mm -hmm. no I I was feeling I felt like I was ready to be out in the world again and then then I got told I couldn't be and then I think it was like and then go ahead I think it was like mid-march that was like it went 
So, mm-hmm. and then also, um, I don't like people telling me what to do. And so as soon as they're like, you can't, I'm like, you can't make me <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's the Gemini coming out. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I can't do this now. That's all I want to do. Yeah. It's everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I understand that. So we're going to move on to the next question. Um, well, really quick. Oh, we ask our guests what are the your quarantine drink of choice is. That's that's lower down the list. Oh well, I'm skipping now. Oh, okay, because I've seen her drink it many times now during the interview, and it's water. It's a lot of water. But I also asked her prior to this if she could have any drink during the quarantine. What was that drink? And what would it be? A juice uh-huh. with pineapple blackberry and mint and so what would be the recipe because we want to um it'd be a whole pineapple Mm. or you could do if you didn't have a juicer you could do frozen pineapple with blackberries and mint but if you have a juicer i would do a whole pineapple a pint of blackberries and a couple of sprigs of mint delicious that sounds good like pineapple lemonade but pineapple aid yeah 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 oh, black it's yeah. it's so good and but especially if you like tart okay so that yep. would be the drink of choice yeah okay sorry sorry megan go ahead yeah okay so the next thing is you know we're we're getting i think this is the last like serious question you know because we're a hard-hitting news <laughs> no um so can you tell us about your design process like and what programs did you use to design your fabric um I just used Adobe Illustrator. Mm-hmm. I um I would draw everything by hand and then I would um I would usually just take a picture of it, lock it down and then draw it again. Um if I were and that was very tedious if you've done mm-hmm. that, you know mm-hmm. how tedious it is and then making the layers and it's a lot. Um it was more complicated than it needed to be. Um, but I think especially if you use that software, you know that you just, you find a way mm-hmm. and then that's your way. Mm-hmm. And it, it feels like as, as I've watched people use the software that there's no wrong way. There's also no right way. <laughs> like No, no. It's, um, it's making the software work for you. I think as the right. user. Um, And so I've seen people use it completely differently. And I think that that's fascinating. But if I were designing now, I would just probably mostly be using my iPad. Mm -hmm. And like a drawing program like Procreate or? Yeah, I really like Procreate a lot. I know that they've added all of the, I don't know about the functionality of them, but that Adobe is working on shifting to, Mm -hmm. because they want those dollars from everybody every month forever and ever amen oh yeah um, the subscription base yeah the cloud. Our new creative cloud <laughs> um and so they're working on moving things to the ipad but like mm-hmm. their their two apps that they had for a while were not procreate rocks procreate mm-hmm. is so so good and you can upgrade it for like i think a hundred bucks for life like oh, that's wow. it. you pay once and then you get vectors really yep that's good to know you just just, pay once okay because i just recently got an ipad pro and a pencil and procreate and procreate is still kind of a mystery to me and i was going to take some sort of online class i would Um, definitely i mean depending on what you want to do with it mm -hmm. um there's a kid named i think his name is jerem it's a utah name um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he has a he has a Skillshare a free Skillshare oh. class. Okay, um, Lizzie, how would you, you spell it though? What's that? Yeah, you have to spell it in a Utah way though, Jerem. I actually think it's just J. It's just Jar O M J A R. Oh, I would have spelled it differently. I would have been like J E R U M. It it's not that. I know okay. it's not that. <laughs> um. <laughs> But he's really, he, he's an, 
you've seen his illustrations. Apple uses yeah. his illustrations. Procreate uses his illustrations. Like he's really, really good. But I would just take some classes. Like yeah. I would just watch because I he's but his one free class because i don't know if you're gonna do like full-on illustration or just design in it mm -hmm. or just sketching or i don't know what you want to uh, do with anything it. really i just all wanna, of it i always like to know how to use it so i can use it and that's kind of where i wanted to be able to draw even just quilt pattern layouts so what did mm -hmm. i do i decided to go to the local community college and do the graphic design program because it's stupid cheap yes it took two years but now i know illustrator so it was really it was worth it. Awesome. I mean, what else am I going to do? Also, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you for doing that. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. So I know, well, I mean, it's, it's, I always wanted to go back and get my master's, but you know, just doing something while I'm here in a town that's not my style, that was a, a good use of my time. So, so I recommend just, it. Just take some Skillshare classes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's, it is an incredible, and it, it gets, I feel like it's more robust all the time like what you can actually do mm. on it and it costs fourteen ninety nine, and then you can upgrade it for a hundred bucks for the rest of your like as long as that's, you know that's a great yeah that's a great deal and owning like turning. owning that um owning it outright is great as opposed to a monthly subscription anyway so right. I'm all where they have you on the hook for the rest of your life Right. Yes. Toby is not sponsoring us in any way. <laughs> or Procreate. I just crashed them. <laughs> Procreate isn't sponsoring us. Procreate. Yeah. Yes, they're not sponsoring us, but shout if you want to. No, just kidding. Um, okay, so this is a good question. What, um, was there any fabric line that surprised you in any way? Um... I think catnap really surprised me it, just because it it did so much better than anything else <laughs> and I think it was just because it was cats really okay. yep. oh interesting never deny the power of kitties quilt ladies really like cats yeah and so I think why that one did so much better than others is because people who wouldn't typically stock my fabric in their shops uh -huh. did because it was cats. Megan, do you have catnap? Do I have catnap? Actually, pull, yes. Pull it out. Um, I'm like, I don't. <laughs> hold on. It's, I have actually the whole line in, in yardage. That was the first line I bought. I think that's the first line I bought ever where I just bought like a, you know, a half yard of all of it or something, but never doubt the power of my sun bikes either. I mean, yeah. those are adorable, but yeah, kitties. This one was my, was actually my favorite colorway. This one, cause of the rosy cheeks. Mm -hmm. That, that print has been ripped off so much. Mm. Yeah, no, there was, I, I did see a, a skirt or something that was definitely those faces at a popular big box store. Yeah, and pet beds and all sorts of things. Um, I, yeah, catnap surprised me. Um, I, I think a couple of things surprised me along the way. Um, I was also, I was really pleased with... Um, the response to natural history. Mm -hmm. I love natural just history. Just because I'm like, oh, everybody loves science. Like, mm -hmm. it just, it was yeah. like, oh, you guys too? Me too. Yeah. I mean, we all took it in school. We, we, everybody took science at some point, right? Right. No, natural history. I love natural history. So, me too. Um, okay. We're not asking you to choose your favorites, but if you were to choose. But we kind of are. <laughs> favorites of your lines which would it be outfoxed outfoxed really outfoxed Hi. um that main print it just like it just does something to me it's like yeah. it's so you want me to grab it i have yeah. some is that the Hold that's on. the one with the little fox and you know, i'm like my it's very low down on that pile Pull up 
Oh, it's this one, I bet. <gasps> yes, that one. <laughs> you see that? Yes. There it is. It just feels so good. And then, like, the, I love the yellow with the green, mm -hmm. the other colorway. I, the purple and orange isn't as much. Oh, this one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's perfect. It, does, it has a lot of elements. So, look, but look, she didn't even hesitate on picking her favorite baby there. I know. And then I also, you know, I really, really, really love, um, I love printmaking. I know not a lot of people do, and that's okay. I also, uh, you know, and then I do love the thing that everybody else loves, which is the tapestry print from The Lovely Hunt. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I like that, like, Megan's just looking behind her. I'm just like, mm. yeah, I have a little bit of Lizzie House. <laughs> it's just, I like, it's, it, it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of things that attract me to it. The co colors and whimsical little creatures and faces and, you know, a, a Mary Blair-esque, you know, styling from the early ones to, you know, it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's lovely. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was just, it was really like touching to, um, make the bundles for the big sale that we had in um, November before everything fell apart. Um, just, I, I could look back at the work um, really objectively and, and just be like, she did really great work. Like, like look at it like outside of myself and be like gosh she worked really hard and it was really really good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely be proud of yourself it's yeah. a it's an it's a nice little docket there yeah. it's so it's a, and it's a lot there's a lot of it there is a lot because i was trying to like <laughs> trying to think of how many lines there are there's a lot mm -hmm. there's a lot and then you have the basics in there as well and i mean so it it goes on and on it's always it's always a fun treat to find buried in a small quilt shop in the middle of nowhere when you can find some goodies and be like, yes. So I would love if I could like, cause you know, people go to those big like warehouse stores that have bought ends of runs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're selling. What's that? Boston. There's one in Boston. Somebody... Well, Boston was another anomaly. They, they, but like but you can even get in the midwest they'll have these boltons or like flat folds and then other stores will buy them because like craft warehouse in oregon always had a whole bunch of flat folds and that's actually where i got my first lizzie fabric because they'll get these five yard cuts from somewhere in the midwest and they'll just have a table of them and right mm -hmm. yeah that's where i got a lot of it to begin there's with there's another was... one there somebody just posted one in minneapolis i know there's one in ontario somewhere that people go to and they find my stuff mm -hmm. for nothing and I'm like buy it for me <laughs> like please right. buy it for me <laughs> I know for a fact Violet Craft will do the same thing she'll be like if you see this print let me know <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's like she just can't get it anymore and she loves right. it you know mm -hmm. so yeah I, I get that that's like I think I found something from Guising at the store down here oh my um, god that, you know my favorite that's, that's I, such it's so interesting it did so poorly in stores like it did so poorly it was clearanced everywhere mm. people didn't get it didn't like it didn't want it and then like a year later people lost their minds over it and it was absolutely gone mm -hmm. like just totally totally gone it's like when a movie comes out and at first it just does okay in the box office and then it's a cult classic you it's know sleeper, i think it, yep. Like, didn't, I don't know if Goonies did really well at first when it came out, and now it's like, you know, Goonies is just like the movie, or this is a very a sci fi one, but like The Fifth Element did horrible when it came out in the theater. Right. And like, if it's on TV, I'll be like, yeah, I'll watch The Fifth it's Element. It's a I love total that. cult classic. Yeah. 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 So, so that's, that's, yeah, I think that's totally a cult classic. I love that line. I still, I still have half yards, but I'm like, do you I'm, really? I do. That's I made it. 
my single girl is out of it but i, I know it was me. very sweet yeah but still. that's why you haven't let me in your house huh because you're yeah. worried i'll steal it yeah and by sweet i mean very spooky <laughs> <laughs> so are there any new ventures coming up for you on the horizon um just i'm mostly just being a mom right now mm -hmm. um but i am working on a quilt um i i'm always working on a quilt like even if it's just um because i i love designing like i don't particularly um i'll just say it i don't love the industry mm -hmm. like but i i do love the work like mm -hmm. i love i love quilting as art um and i i love designing and i love the people the community um yeah. I love, but the industry no thank you um and so yeah i'm working on a quilt i i like to what i like to do is i my stuff is mm, tedious uh difficult um and so i like to go through museum quilts mm -hmm. um like like really really like 200 year old quilts mm. oh, wow. um and pattern them for myself mm -hmm. and figure them out mm -hmm. and, like a quilty puzzle and understand them yep that's cool that's, that's interesting to me so i'm working on a on a pretty cool one right now awesome well i yeah. can't wait to see that um okay so it like what is your current sewing when well, you kind of answered that or knitting project because i know you knit too right i do knit um i was gonna knit some socks because I thought so I bought a bunch of yarn and then the baby changed mm. like the, the you know like you're like oh I have this amount of time in this way and then the baby is like a couple like she changes every day like her schedule changes and mm. what's required of me changes and so not knitting right now um I'm I'm working up to cutting fabric right now yeah that's good that's good yeah. i know I, it's it's hard for me sometimes i like i'm like oh i want to do that and then i was like oh but it's almost like filling out a form you know like as a, have you ever filled out a form and it's like you look they're like oh you have to fill out this form and then you're like no i don't need it that bad i'm just gonna walk away <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna back up I um you, i was never here i was never here um uh yeah i think the thing is also and i've i've lamented about this to ben is that it's hard for me i think it's my megan you can probably attest to this being a gemini you want to finish like you want to get into it and do the entire thing so i would in the past in my past life just like the book and doing an entire booth myself i'm going to do the entire thing start to finish as fast as i possibly can because if i stop i will never pick it back up again because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm just on to the next thing and so being responsible for my beautiful tiny human i and feeding her every three hours and that taking an hour mm -hmm. like and then like so then i've got maybe an hour and 15 minutes in between each of those things. And I have other things that have to get done in those and things. You have to and eat stuff. and you have to wash dishes or throw laundry in or. And yeah. somewhere you have to rest, you know. Yeah. Right. And so, and I still, I'm still trying to sleep when she sleeps for at least part of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm like, so I've got, 15 minutes every <laughs> every six hours to get something done and then by the end of the day when everybody's asleep i'm finally alone mm -hmm. and i don't want to do anything <laughs> it's so it's really challenging and so right. i'm i'm interested to see how that <laughs> like, sometimes it's okay just to do those things in your head for a while until you that's can that's what i'm 
until you can get them out because yeah it's goodness knows you're just sometimes it's about survival like the first two weeks after having the girls i i can't remember it i just remember it being pretty pretty awful at times just so, trying to survive right and so we're at we're at four months but we've been in newborn phase for a long time mm -hmm. um yeah. just because magnolia is she's making her own schedule she's miss bossy pants so would you call her maggie for short or no mm -mm. <laughs> okay i just wanted to she that. you know i thought that we might and then i met her and i was like oh you're not a maggie in any way oh, okay. just like i am not a liz mm. no mm -hmm. no nope no. and so she's not a maggie has somebody ever tried to call you a liz Oh my gosh. I say, my name's Elizabeth. And they're like, good to meet you, Liz. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. How could you do that to me? What about who Betsy? gave you permission? What's that? What about Betsy? No. No. No, I feel like Betsy is definitely an antiquated form of Elizabeth. I just don't think people really go by that anymore. I know somebody who's called Betsy. Really? Yeah. Me? It's weird. She chose it too. Okay, as ESL, okay, I'm just gonna say this. The the that doesn't make sense. When the name jumps, like Richard is Dick. Like I don't get that. I don't know that I get it. I don't know. I mean, it's just some... when it jumps like that, though. Like I can say yeah. when it's Maggie, Magnolia, you know. Liz yeah, like, or Rich, Richard, maybe Rich. Right, that yeah. I can understand. But when yeah. it jumps from like Richard, that, that's a that's a definitely one of the extreme cases. Yes, I mean Betsy makes sense. It's Beth, mm -hmm. and like cutesy, like mm -hmm. Beth is a cutesy Beth. Beth. Betsy, yeah, yeah. But then Elizabeth, Beth, Betsy. Mm -hmm. But some of these two, it's just it's a yeah. jump. Yeah, it's, it's a, a jump. jump. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just putting it out there. Okay. So, okay. But I'm, I'm definitely an Elizabeth and a Lizzie, but not, but a, not a Liz. Never a Liz. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so here's a. Now we're getting into just the really floofy questions. What's your go-to comfort food? Warm food? No. <laughs> I know what it's like sometimes when and you're like something that's warm. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm just like food. <laughs> um, I love pizza. Mm. Um, it has all the food groups. I mean, it's just like good pizza. Um, is so good. Um, I love. I think comfort food. You're gonna think it's so funny, but like if I'm really not feeling well, all I want is white rice with butter on it <laughs> no we i feel like we had that too like growing up we would do brown rice with honey and warm milk on it mm. and that's kind of that's super weird but that's we ate that growing up sometimes especially this if you'd been hot sick. rice with butter it, on it oh my goodness you know what? as an asian and since my rice is a major food group i'm like this is very interesting the combinations that i'm hearing right now because i've never well so r rice growing up in texas rice is a major food group because they used to mm -hmm. grow a ton of rice in texas like and so my dad grew up near where they grew rice like and so rice was like a major food group to mm -hmm. our family and so it's i think that butter and rice is a southern thing mm -hmm. okay it sounds good I mean, it's butter delicious. On anything. Yeah, butter on anything not sounds good. <laughs> so, have you have you guys made bread at the stay at home thing? I feel like no, it's a... I I made sourdough for a long, long time, and then I my poor starter died. Oh. That was years ago. Like, but I we made a ton of bread, mm -hmm. and so I decided to forego the bread movement because I would eat the bread movement like mm. um but we did make banana bread and mm. i have baked i've baked a bit i made a cake for ben's birthday that was really lovely it was a carrot cake because we have a lot of carrots um, <laughs> and 
um i made coconut macaroons mm. and banana bread and i feel like banana bread's kind of a staple like that's just you know you have soft yeah. bananas banana bread we we use those bananas though in so many ways and so it never gets to be bread oh, and so it's mm. nice mm-hmm. when we do it this is a funny question. So what non-essential service are you going to run to when the stay at home order is lifted? Um, the governor of Michigan just made all home and garden centers non-essential. Oh, bummer. So liquor stores are essential. Dispensaries are essential. Is marijuana legal garden- there? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. But gardening is not essential. That's interesting, especially, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what I was, I was thinking, I was like, have you started your garden? Like, um, We don't have a community space this year because we were planning on not being here. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. right now we have no space, oh. which is, that is super hard for me. Like yeah. really, really hard because that is such a, I feel like such a big part of like who I am and my mental health and mm-hmm. so gonna have to figure something out. So you would run to the hardware gardening store? Which yeah is- we've got a really nice one um, downtown that we like to support um, and then also we love like all through the spring we go to there are different um, plant sales mm-hmm. that we go to that I it's it's just like my favorite thing um to go and find interesting plants to grow and so none of that's happening yeah but now we know what the first thing will be when this is lifted it'll be home and garden downtown (laughs) (laughs) um i i've known you for a long time and like i think like i've seen you so so many different projects and i don't know like i don't know i i would be curious what the answer to this question is is what sewing project do you want to try but are a little intimidated by because you've garment sewn yeah i don't know that anything scares me i know i don't know what would what would scare me Hmm. what would scare you i think if i had to make my own underwear and bra you could do it i'd probably just go commando at that point you're like we're done because what if you have like a catastrophic like undergarment failure based (laughs) on your construction exactly yeah be based on my construction and i'm not i'm not 100 percent guaranteeing that yeah (laughs) that would be something i wouldn't mind like i wouldn't mind sewing my own yeah my own undergarments or activewear even like knits and spandex and stretchy things are always been a little intimidating for me like I feel like I've conquered the zipper and the bag and all of that now so and even garment sewing like basic garment sewing I can do but it's definitely the stretchy and the surging and the the spandex like could I trust my own yoga pants if I make them and I do some sort of crazy yoga move that they wouldn't just like split open split open yes the thing is y'all is that you get to test them at home Mm -hmm. before you like drive them out of the lot you know (laughs) like you don't have to take them to a yoga class to figure out if they're going to work for you right and the other thing is and I think that this is just um it's just fabric it's just it's like so you get it wrong and then next time you get it a little more right so yep. we all start somewhere at least i have a surgery now so there you go that's awesome and i know how to thread it mostly no that's i think it. that's my next thing that i need to get is a surgery and like mm-hmm. like conquer that fear of yeah making they're yeah. very loud they're loud little things like mm-hmm. yeah that's down yeah. there so um i know your taste in music lizzie a little yeah. bit yeah. A little bit. So what is your secret jam that you don't want to admit to but you love? Um John Mayer New Light. That mm-hmm. song that he came out with like two years ago. What? I don't even mind admitting it. It's a freaking good song. <laughs> it's a good jam. <laughs> oh now my we're, gosh. we're gonna have to listen to it. It was so good. The music video is hysterical. It looks like Tim and Eric did it. 
Wait, John Mayer, what was it? New Light. New Light. It's just a really good song. I don't know. If we, I don't know if we can people, necessarily play it. Well, people are so embarrassed about John Mayer, and I'm just like, if he writes a good song, he writes a good song, guys. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna have to listen to it, but I'm not gonna play it on the this this video because I don't want to. You'll be glad it. that you did. Okay, yeah. but privately, everyone. This. Yeah, on your own yeah. time. On your own time. On your own time. Okay, what are you binge watching? Um, I'm not binge watching anything. I'm binge playing Animal Crossing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. We haven't really been watching a ton of stuff nice. because I've been dominating. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is this is a fun. This is like we have like only a couple more questions, but. We're going to play Shag, Mary Kill. Okay. <laughs> Cookie, cake, or pie? Who would you shag, who would you marry, and who would you kill? <laughs> <That's> weird. <laughs> um, probably. Well, who would you kill first? That's probably, probably. the probably cookies okay mm -hmm. you would kill cookie then you have cake and pie who would you marry you probably marry cake oh or no it could it could go either way mm -hmm. okay so cake and pie are what you want in your life yeah cookies i mean i so hit or miss for me yeah I mean, I like the portability of a cookie. I, I mentioned this before, but I will say I like the savory and sweet aspect of a pie. Sure. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like a pie I could settle down with and be satisfied for life. Okay. And here's a follow up. Drag Mary Kill. No. Vegan. Vegan style. Yeah. yeah. Yeast, cashew. Nu oh. Nutritional yeast. Oh, nutritional yeast, mm -hmm. cashew, or tofu. Shag Mary Kill. I'd get rid of uh, nutritional yeast. I haven't used it for a couple of years mm -hmm. okay. for health reasons, and it's been fine. I've been fine. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a popular, like, additive for vegan sure. sauces and things. So that's yeah. why we, we put it in there as one of the top vegan ingredients. Who would you marry? Cashews or tofu? Tofu. Oh. I'd marry tofu. Yeah. Okay. I think, that, I think that's a solid, solid choice. Sorry. All right, let me get the next okay. one ready. So a we, firm choice. <laughs> a firm choice. <laughs> 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 Tofu humor. I love it. So we, I stole this from um, a popular YouTube show called Hot Ones. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but we mm -hmm. dug into your Instagram and it's called Explain That Gram. Okay. And she's going to pull it up here. What's up? Look at that gal. Explain mm -hmm. this gram. I was being a mermaid for Halloween. Uh huh. Which is why I had pearl bracelet clamshells on my boobs. Uh huh. <laughs> and my beautiful uh, purple mermaid wig that I bought at Asian City in Sandy. <laughs> yes, Asian City's right by with a, my shop. Freaking address. love that place. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's still around. And I was like, I went into Asian City just a couple months ago for the very first time. And I'm like, Floor? for the first time? Yes. Flooring on one side, wigs, and everything Asian on the other side. Flooring? <laughs> oh, yeah. It must have added flooring. This sounds like a destination location when you're oh, going absolutely. to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, but they have like, they even have like high end Korean skincare. They do. Oh, yeah. And wigs. And fish. Yeah, wigs. And like I will it's, I will it's, say, Lizzie, in the future, if you're thinking about a color change, lavender is a lovely color for it's for your little, skin tone. It's, it's it's kind of amazing. I, I look so good in this picture because I had just been, I'd been working with a personal trainer for like two months. <laughs> uh, I don't look like that now. 
Wait, I think I had a second picture, right? So this is, so you made your mm -hmm. whole costume, obviously, right? Yeah, I made the whole thing. Okay, let me get the second one. That takes okay. a little bit more. Um, that's a different window. We're getting there. Okay. Stand by. Oh gosh, how many windows do I have open? That this is a trivia funny. question. Um, <laughs> okay, we're getting there. Okay. Slowly. Good. Okay. Almost there. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you've been to Asian City. That's crazy. I've been there a lot. <laughs> like a lot. That's crazy. Come All on. right, here's the next one. <gasps> oh yes. Explain Look at that. Oh, my eyes are like Magnolia's eyes. Look, okay. There What's we go. the question? Well, oh, like that Graham. Graham. Um, this is at my dance recital. I was seven years old. This was my tap number outfit. Mm. We danced to Lollipop. Um, oh my gosh. I, my hat got like sat on. Do you see how it's like crunched at the top? I, I do appreciate, like, I mean, growing up doing dance, I appreciate the addition of the matching hat to the ensemble. That's, that's definitely a look. I, I had assorted, like, bun accessories, but never a full hat. We were in Texas. Don't forget that. Mm. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> hey, how I long really did you long. dance? Um, I think two years. Oh, okay. I would have, I would have kept doing it. I, um, I actually, I was thinking of interviewing people, um, other artists, and I, one of the questions that I was going to ask, so I'll ask it to you guys, okay. um, was knowing yourself as well as you do now, mm -hmm. if you could go back to when you were making like formative decisions, would you be doing the same thing that you are today? Hmm. Hmm. I, it's funny because like, I think I would have never imagined where I am now. Like sure. I would have never like, hey, growing up in third grade when they ask you, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you're like thinking doctor, teacher, police officer, fireman. I would have never said fabric store owner slash event coordinator type of business. Mm -hmm. I would have never right. said that. Right, but knowing yourself as well as you do now, mm -hmm. so like the road that you've been on to get you to this place, mm -hmm. would that inform anything in the past? Like, would that change anything? Like, would you choose different? No, I don't think so. I think everything that we've done up to now has made us what we are. And, sure. and even though it took a little while to maybe get to an industry or an area where we're working, create, like being in a creative industry and making money from that. I mean, that's fabulous. I think that's like, that's my dream job at this point, but mm -hmm. did I take kind of a waggly road to get there? Yes. But I'm okay with that because those experiences have helped me. Mm -hmm. It's where I am now anyway. Um, See, and I wouldn't me, have wanted looking... to do yeah, art in college. I would, I'm glad that I did the, the major that I did. I did English lit and history because I like that background too. So yeah. I think it works. Yeah. For me, I'm like, I would have stayed in dance. I would have been a dancer mm -hmm. and I would have, but it was just so in Texas, it was so you were, it was like drill team or nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's not how I wanted to dance. Um, and I would have been like a botanist. Oh, interesting. Oh. That's a, that's a good one though. Yeah, I mean, I still can. Yeah, you totally can. And have you seen The Martian? Mm -hmm. We just watched The Martian. Did you read the book? No, I haven't read the book. Mm -hmm. Much better than the book. movie. Mm -hmm. Much better than the. I book. mean, he's a space botanist. I know. Yeah, astronaut botanist. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean that's no, a combination. That's not. That's not where I want to take that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I'm just thinking too. Like, yeah, think of think of you doing your own book of botany with like your own illustrations i mean have you read um amy stewart at all she did wicked plants 
and I know of it. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she has a beautiful illustrator do it, but just like, I don't know. It's such a cool book. Cause it's like information about this particular plant. Here's the drawing, a beautiful drawing of the plant and here's all the information about it. But that's probably the history side of me too. Just like wanting a nice. Yeah. So what, almost like we just become a master gardener, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is very exciting to me. So yeah. Wow. But yeah, I think it would have, I think I might've gone into think, dance with a little gardening or a lot of gardening. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I think it's just like, but like, when you say that, like, and this is getting really deep oh, maybe or meta, but like, don't you think that your path getting to, to where you are and what you've been through has led you to the love of gardening and planting and, all that fun stuff you know what I mean um, I think that that was always in me mm, okay. I think that it was always in me and and that I feel very grateful to have um like found that part of myself when I did mm -hmm. but that it was always there mm -hmm. oh, okay yeah I think I think a lot of it too is you know I've always thought that asking an 18 year old you know, to know or, or have a good idea of what they want to do for the rest of their lives, you know, it's yeah. always been a horrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you're going to go to college. Now you need to figure out in this next four years, what you want to do for the rest of your life right. or what you want to base your education on, which will be used on every resume or application. And it's, right. it's, that's a big task. I think that's a big ask for 18 year olds mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why they invented the gap year, right? Yeah, like it's it's so <laughs> funny. Gap. It's employed all of us. <laughs> I know it's so funny because it's like I think about I, when when I was young, I was like the th first thing I did was like I opened the newspaper because I was like I just got on a, like I get, just got fired from a dead end job and opened up the newspaper and instantly went to it's a okay what's all these jobs oh accounting. And I went into my degree into accounting. It wasn't like there was love for it. I was just like, I need a job. I need a stable job. And then I went into accounting. I hated it. And I still <laughs> do hate it. But then it's gotten me to like, and then I got into the creative side. And then all of a sudden there's like, oh, hey, we have a need for accounting. And then it, it's just weird how things happen. It's given you a great skill set that mm -hmm. afforded you the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I hate things. accounting. So, but, and it. sometimes, but think too, it was kind of like a haphazard set of things took you from like a regular nine to five job to what you're doing today. And yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Accounting director of operations for an IT company to now to mm -hmm. shop owner in COVID-19 territory. <laughs> I mean, good thing you're I an online order. shop, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, Lizzie, that's our, that's the end of Sotopia and friends. Thank you for joining us.